group. So the auditor of the parent company, also known as a holding company, also known as a holding company, the parent uh, or the uh, auditor of this, the auditor of the parent company is called the group auditor, the group auditor, group auditor. And then the other thing you're supposed to remember very fast is that uh, this group auditor does not to be, does not have to audit all the subsidiaries. Listen, what am I saying? What I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen, is very simple, that we have the parent here. The parent, the one who is the parent, is called the group who? The group auditor. It's called the group auditor. And then most importantly, this group, we happen to be having subsidiaries. And the group auditor does not have to be the one auditing the subsidiaries. Actually, subsidiaries are normally audited by auditors whom we call what here component. Component auditors. Component auditors, who we call component auditors. But now remember as well that the group auditor, the group auditor can as well be given what? A role of auditing a subsidiary. But it's not a must that a group auditor, a group auditor is the one. It's not a must that a group auditor is the one to audit a subsidiary because subsidiaries can be audited by who? By component auditors. So then the very first question, if you look at your past papers here that you normally see your examiner asking, will it be, for example, you'll be asked here, how do you assess these people? How do you get to assess the work done by these people? Even when you come in as a group auditor, remember you have the right of saying, I'll not work with that person. I don't want that component auditor to work with me. So what is some of the, that uh, a serious criteria do you think, ladies and gentlemen, shall we use to be appraising these people here? How will we appraise these people to know whether they're really fit for the role, whether they are fit for the role? What, what do we normally use? The criteria that we shall be using to appraise these people. Somebody talk to me, somebody talk to me, somebody talk to me, somebody talk to me. Criteria to be used. So the first thing, of course, that I have to look at, ladies and gentlemen, is whether they are registered with ISPAC as members of what year? Are they members of ISPAC? Are they registered eh, with ISPAC as auditors? That's a key thing, a key thing. Very important thing. Ladies and gentlemen, after that, now I look at the ethics, the ethics all ethical principles. Number one, I'll have to look at, uh, I'll have to look at uh, whether they are professionally competent. So I'll ask for their experiences. Are they competent? How about their behavior? Are they people, for example, with some criminal record? Are they people, for example, ladies and gentlemen, yeah, a good question there. What if the subsidiaries are in another country, of course, uh, or culture, uh, they are, you know, you look at uh, the governing, the governing, the governing body of accountants in that country, in that country. Thank you very much for that question in that country. Very, very important because remember as they sign off accounts, they have to sign off accounts with whose mandate, like now ISPAC, ISPAC of Rwanda. Like for example, I IKPAO, Uganda. ETC, 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 right, right, right. So the concept is, do they have a license? If they don't have a license to do that, please don't work with those people because you're going to get yourself into pro problems. Remember at the end of the day, even if you are not auditing the components, who will bear the overall responsibility for the group opinion? It is you as a group auditor. And that is why you must ensure that uh, even at the component level, things are right. Things are right. Things are right. Yeah. So come and look at all those ethical things, like things of integrity, things of independence. Are they really very independent from the component managers? 
it will be very important for me to check on that. So check on all the ethical principles, check on uh, independence. If it's independence, check on all those things of uh, independence threats, the surface, do they have shares, etc, etc. So ethics will be very important. And then now, listen, gentlemen, there is a review, review of their work. So under review of the component auditor's work, ladies and gentlemen, for instance, I'll ask for last year's audit file. Then for example, I'll be able to see ETC, ETC. I'll ask for, ladies and gentlemen, the letter that they wrote to the management, especially on internal control weaknesses. If they wrote a letter to the management, about internal control weaknesses and the management never took any step, then I'll know this auditing management director relationship is not working in the interest of the company. I'll know that these auditors are weak because if every other year we are telling you to implement controls and you're not implementing them, and then we continue in this case here being your auditors, then straight away it means that we are here, we are in this for purpose of what here, for purpose of money. Right? So this concept of review, ladies and gentlemen, is critical, is critical, is critical. Now, ladies and gentlemen, also, it will be very important for me to check on the materiality, materiality of the component, materiality of the subsidiary. So under materiality, if, for example, you have like a subsidiary's uh, revenue being about 15%, 15% of the total groups, revenue or 15% of the assets of the subsidiary or rather 15%, 15% having, for example, here, like we have uh, uh, the groups, the groups, groups, in this case here, assets. So if, for example, you take the subsidiary's assets, subsidiary's assets, you've put them together, you put them together, and then you realize that they are uh, more, more, they are more than 15%, of the group's assets, then that is a component, a component that is material. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll be explaining this better, but all that we need to know about material subsidiaries. If a subsidiary is material and it happens that there is an auditor there, then you have, of course, through the directors. Remember, as an auditor, you don't have powers really. You can't go say, fire that one, no. But through the directors, you tell the directors, what am I required to do? If this component is significant, if the risk from this component is so high, I'm required to come and audit you. So if you want to retain that person, and of course I come on board, you pay me as well. Well and good, you can afford the two auditors. Otherwise, let the other guy step down. So the concept of materiality is something that we have to understand for us to be able to understand this group auditing thing. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the other thing that we have to pick very well is the consolidate. Look at all the questions asked there. The consolidation process. The consolidation process. Whenever they talk of the consolidation process, ladies and gentlemen, there are key things that I'm supposed to know, which I'm supposed to be reviewing. As a group auditor, ladies and gentlemen, I have to review the concept of the group structure. So of course, I'll go to the group structure documentations and I see how they have defined their parents and I see in this case here how they have defined the subsidiaries. And then of course, the most important thing that I'll have to do when I'm auditing these, I have to see how they define the control. Remember, we can only take you to our subsidiary status as a parent. We can only accept you as our subsidiary if we are able to control your operations. And remember, if you look at your questions in your exams, control is not about just quantitatives. Control is not about 50%. No, 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 no. Ladies and gentlemen, remember here that control is about many things. Of course, in this case here, we have the quantitative aspect, the concept of uh, that this company can only become our subsidiary can only be considered to be our subsidiary if we have, uh, for example, more than 50% of the shares. That's a condition, one condition, very important. But at times you could be having something like 20% of the shares, but the other director, shareholders, I mean, who are uh, having 80%, they have agreed with us. 
and transfer the mandate of controlling this company for them on their behalf. So we have fine a minority status, but by the fact that we have been bequeathed the responsibility of controlling the management, the responsibility of controlling the operations, ladies and gentlemen, then the subsidiary or this company, even if we have 20%, so long as we are given control, this control could be coming as a result of us being told that you guys, you have the mandate of appointing four out of, for example, five directors. You see four out of five, that is a high control level because directors go to control an organization. So remember, don't forget that uh, as an auditor, I have to review, review. I have to review. I have to look at, I have to look at, I have to confirm that the group structure has been captured well. And the group structure, ladies and gentlemen, I have to even recalculate. I have to recalculate the percentages. Remember when I'm recalculating the percentages, I must go to the registrar and get the shareholding status of the subsidiary. And of course, at the registrar, I'll be able to see, ladies and gentlemen, that this is a company A. So we have here company A. We have company B. So when I go to the registrar uh, documents of company B, I'll be able to see under B that A owns, A owns this number of shares. So of course I will take the number of shares of A divided by the total number, divided by the total number of shares. So I have to do some recalculations. All oh, those are what you're auditing procedures. Now, ladies and gentlemen, from there, after group structure, I know the other thing that I'll have to ask for. The other thing that I'll have to ask for as an audit procedure of group companies, I'll have to ask for uh, the net assets. The net assets, the net assets of the subsidiaries, of the subsidiaries at acquisition, at acquisition and at reporting. The net assets of the subsidiaries at acquisition and at reporting. So these net assets, see, for example, at acquisition, ladies and gentlemen, these are 10 and at reporting it as 15. I know that the difference will be in this case here five, and these will be called the post acquisition what year? Post acquisition profits. So as an auditor, ladies and gentlemen, what I'll do as a procedure, it will be very important for me to recalculate this figure. So recalculation is very important. When we talk of uh, assets of the entity, ladies and gentlemen, we must always think of uh, this other procedure of observation. Observation. Assets. If it's lorries, they have. ETC. And then, of course, there is a concept of what here? The concept of uh, inspecting, doing the vouching, doing the tracing. ETC. ETC. So I'm trying to speak the group accounting language. I know in group accounting language auditing, there is no way really I can talk about group reporting without what you're mentioning, goodwill. So goodwill will be key for me to look at how it was calculated and recalculate it afresh. You recalculate it afresh. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, goodwill, there is something that is very important, the impairment of goodwill. I have to see whether it was accounted for properly, whether the impairment loss was captured and accounted for properly. Very important. That is very important. Very important. Very important. Ladies and gentlemen, remember you cannot talk of group auditing without remembering, without remembering, without remembering, without remembering the intra balances. Balances within the group must always be eliminated. Balances within the group must always be. So I have to confirm and see whether these intra balances were eliminated nicely. Were they eliminated nicely? Great. So ladies and gentlemen, so you have the notes already with yourselves. There, it's a three page thing, three pages only. You go through it and then we look at uh, two past paper questions on this group auditing and then we call it a day. Otherwise, it has been a pleasure hosting uh, you this afternoon. 
I hope you have gotten something out of our discussions. Have you gotten something out of our discussions? Amo metoka bureng.